Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. On a normal car, this is what a PCV valve looks like. All it is is a simple check valve. It lets crankcase uh, vapors escape from the valve cover, doesn't let air get back in. Those crankcase vapors are recycled into the intake manifold so they can be burned. On a BMW, this is what a PCV valve looks like. It's actually a CCV valve, a crankcase cyclone ventilation system, CCV. So, uh, you know, the reason that this looks so complicated is because BMW actually wants to separate the oil from the crankcase vapors and uh, it wants to return the oil back to the oil pan through this tube, but it wants to get the crankcase vapor sucked up through this tube and returned to the intake manifold. The crankcase vapors actually enter through here and they proceed into this little cyclone chamber and they actually spin around the, the cyclone chamber. The oil gets actually splattered up against the walls. It, it condenses and drips back down, but the crankcase vapors actually get sucked up through this tube and go past the diaphragm that's inside of here and go back into the intake manifold. Now, the problem with this is it's, it's kind of poorly engineered. There are two main failure points. Well, the biggest failure point actually is with this tube right here. It's just too close to, I guess, the engine block. It, you know, those too many heat cycles make this tube crack right here at this spot. This is like the number one problem, probably the number one problem with an E46. So many people have this problem. I pretty much, it's, it's guaranteed to happen on every single one. You just have to replace this hose. If you haven't replaced yours, or if you're having problems, if you get, if you have a P0171 and 174 and your car is running rough especially when you first started up this is your culprit right here you have to replace this tube uh, but the other major problem with this is that there's a diaphragm inside of here right and that diaphragm will fail over time and, and especially if you live in a colder climate what happens is <clears throat> there's normally water in the air right so water is is basically you know it, you know the air is actually getting sucked into your engine you're you're burning it but some of the, you're not burning up all the water the water gets sucked into here it mixes with the oil turns into sort of a yellow mayonnaise type of stuff and if you live in a really cold climate the water inside there can freeze and when water freezes it expands turns into ice and it actually can puncture the diaphragm inside here. And the reason that's bad is because, well, to understand that, you have to understand that that diaphragm, it, it's not normally held all the way closed, right? Normally there's actually a spring inside here that's pushing the diaphragm out. Engine vacuum wants to pull the diaphragm closed. And that spring is actually holding the diaphragm open just a little bit so that only a little bit of vacuum is actually making it into this chamber and sucking the vapors up. If there, if there was full engine manifold vacuum being applied to this chamber, then all of your oil would actually get sucked up this tube, well, not all of it, but some of your oil would get sucked up this tube from your, uh, your oil pan and actually be burned inside of your engine, which is, you know, not good. So that's the reason why that diaphragm is there. It's there to just sort of regulate the, the, the vacuum down so that it's not so intense. So if that diaphragm actually dies, then you've got full vacuum applied. And what actually happens is you're going to suck up some of your oil and it's going to burn. You're going to get, you know, smoke out of the back of your tailpipe, a lot of smoke. And so that's not good, right? I want to actually take these tubes off. If you bought, I bought this new, these, uh, this system new to show you guys just for this video. Yeah, it, it's stiff to get off. There we go. So I want to show you something. If you've, uh, if you don't, if you've never replaced your CCV, you haven't seen my other CCV video. I just want to show you that all of these tubes, all the ones that I just took off, they're all quick connect tubes, right? You just kind of, you just kind of snap them on. And then, you know, you could pull them off. They're very difficult to get on, right? I recommend if you are putting these on for the first time or before you put this on the car for the first time, go ahead and work these tubes on and off several times. Pull them on and off. That way you kind of just work them into place, get the O-rings used to seating in, in where they're going to go. And I also recommend putting silicone paste on here. You can find silicone paste as dielectric grease. Uh, the active ingredient is polydimethyl siloxane. If you want to look on the back and make sure you're getting the right stuff, that just helps those O-rings slide on there so much easier but these the other tubes are actually quick connects this bottom one is a quick connect tube but this top one is not a quick connect tube this top one has to be rotated before you can get it on okay so that's kind of how it goes on if you can see there's a little registration there and it kind of slips on just like that really stiff to get on as you can see 
and then it just rotates up into place. You have to do that up inside the intake manifold in order to get this in. So you kind of have to know what you're doing. If you just try to snap this on, you're never gonna get it on. So you have to know that when you're putting it in up inside the intake manifold, you have to slip it on like that and then rotate it up into place. This is why I kind of recommend taking the intake manifold off, especially if you've never done this before. It, it, in my opinion, it's just a little easier to do that way, but you don't have to take the intake manifold off, just so you know. Okay, let's take this thing apart. Let's take the cover off and see what that diaphragm looks like. So I've just removed this cover right here. And as you can see, there's a diaphragm inside with a spring inside there. I'm actually gonna put the spring down so as you can see, there's a sealing surface on the inside of the diaphragm. There's a hole right here that's, that connects to this tube. Down here, there's a hole right here that goes down to this tube. This is where the, this is the second chamber and this is where the oil drains down to the oil pan from. So as you can see, this diaphragm, it looks like it wants to seal and it's got, that, it's got a sealing surface in the center right there and it looks like it wants to seal and create a permanent seal, right? But again, there is that spring which is pushing back against that and it's holding it open just slightly, just enough to create a little bit of vacuum, not enough to suck all the oil up through here, but enough to suck the crankcase vapors through here and up in here. And then it, they just go through into this chamber, in through this, this hole right here back into the intake manifold. Another thing I wanna mention is there's a port right here. You can see that on an M54 engine, which is on like a 2001 and newer E46, not sure the model years of the E39 that also has the M54 engine. Uh, on an M54, this port is capped off, okay? So if you're installing a new CCV valve, you gotta make sure to transfer that port from your old valve onto your new one. On an M52 TU engine, which is the technical update engine, that was the 98, 99, I think 2000, uh, E46s, it was the 323s and the 328s. This, there's actually gonna be a vacuum hose connected to this and that vacuum hose is gonna run up along the fuel rail and it's gonna eventually run down to the fuel pressure regulator, but don't let that fool you. The fuel pressure regulator is not a vacuum reg regulated fuel pressure regulator. It is actually just a fixed fuel pressure. It's supposed to be 50, but in my, in my uh, experience, I've found that it's actually 54 PSI. Uh, so you might wonder why that vacuum line is there if it doesn't regulate the fuel pressure. Well, it's there in case the fuel pressure regulator diaphragm ruptures and lets gasoline out, gasoline and gasoline vapors. Those vapors would get sucked up through that vacuum line and recycled into the intake manifold through this port right here. There's not enough vacuum on this port in order to regulate fuel pressure, in order to affect the fuel pressure. So don't get confused if you're having problems with fuel pressure. This does not control fuel pressure. So one question you might have is, how often do you need to replace your CCV system? It's actually the oil separator that you really need to replace. How often do you need to do that? Um, I think it's gonna depend on your climate. Um, I don't really know. I would probably imagine that these go bad or were started to go bad after about 100,000 miles generally speaking, all over the country in various different climates and conditions. If you live in a really colder area, I mean, I saw one guy on a message board say that he replaces this thing every year just because of the harsh conditions that he goes through. So, you know, again, your mileage may vary. If you're in a really, really cold climate, you'll obviously have to replace it more often. Maybe you might replace it every 30 or 40,000 miles. It just depends on your experience with the car. I think Primarily, most people are gonna be in just kind of a regular environment and you'll probably only have to replace this once, maybe twice, depending on how long you have the car. Now, I understand that a lot of people are nervous about this system. I mean, some people even wanna go so far as to remove this system, delete it from the car. And you know, you can certainly do that if you want to. Um, you can just cap off this port and this port. And if I were you, I would just kind of cut it right down, cut this tube right down here and you know, put a cap there if you want. And then you can just take your crankcase vapors and you know, you can, I guess, uh, release them to the atmosphere. You shouldn't do that. I don't recommend doing that, but you know, some people do it, whatever. Some people decide to replace this with an oil catch can. If you think about it, this, this valve right here, it's just, all it does is perform the function of a catch can. The difference is, the return line does not exist. Your oil catch can just stores all the oil inside of it rather than returning it to the dipstick tube. An oil catch can has to have an input line. It has to have 
vapors coming in and then it has to have vacuum pulling the vapors out. So, you know, people decide to basically run, you know, I, I don't know the size of the hose, but you can just get some vacuum hose um, that will fit on this, uh, on this tube right here. You can kind of cut the tube with a cutoff wheel so that it's just kind of a, you have something to just kind of put a, a line over and you can run that line down to your catch can and then you can cut this right here and also run another line down to your oil catch can. But problem with an oil catch can is it catches all the oil and stores it in there. So there's a lot of maintenance involved with that oil catch can. It actually adds up pretty quickly. You're gonna have to empty that catch can every three to 5,000 miles, which can get to be kind of, you know, a pain in the ass. I mean, in my opinion, you should just stick with this. I mean, yeah, it, it, it does fail, but how often does it fail? Not very, very often. And honestly, if it does fail, if that diaphragm does fail, the biggest problem you have is it kind of consumes a little bit of oil because it sucks that oil up through this tube, right? Well, I have a solution for that. Why don't you just take this tube and why don't you get one of these? This is a check valve. This is a, a 12 millimeter size check valve. You see it just, it, it only allows oil or fuel or vapors to go one way, but not back the other. So what you can just do is you can take this tube and just cut it. Okay, just cut it and you can see this has an arrow on, on it and it will only allow uh, things to go one way. So what we wanna do is we wanna allow the oil to drain this way, but we don't wanna allow the oil to get sucked back up this way. So we'll put it with the arrow facing down. And you just kinda of put it like that and install it. And now you are protected in case this, this uh, diaphragm ruptures. Your oil can't get sucked back up and you'll be all right. So I really hope you learned something about the crankcase ventilation system for an E46 BMW. If you're not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing. I got a lot of great videos still to come. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.